So in the Desiree's baby, cats dropping clearies sympathize with the plight of the mixed blood people and point out the evils of the slave system that created and condemns miscegenation. Certainly, this life confronts external difficulty. Desiree and Armen live in a world that value racial purity. To be black is to be despised to a life of servility, and to be white is to inherit mastery. No matter how beautiful or how fair one may be, blood rules. Armen spent much time in the cottage of a slave named La Blanche, whose name suggests her skin color. Still, she is a mixed race, so she is a slave. And the Crojan boy who fans Desiree's baby is probably the son of the Armin and the La Blanche. The most such a woman can hope for is to be treated well by the master, and to be his concubine because she will never be his own wife. Once her husband rejects her, Desiree must too between disgrace and death. Despite Madame Von Day's offer of sanctuary, Desiree would remain an outcast. He defines himself by his pedigree and by his role as master of his death and his wife. Desiree is desirable only so long as she appears to be a valuable possession. She is there, he believes, to satisfy him. When she no longer does so, he discards her. Armin has a choice. He can love Desiree for what she is or sh think she is, as his father loves his black mother. Or he can let his pride overrule that love. Chopin admires the characters who defies convention, who is sufficiently strong to reject the full standard of his time and place. Armin's inability to surmount prejudice leads to the tragedy of the story. The Sire Baby is a short story written by Kate Chopin in 1892 in St. Louis, Missouri. It was first published on January 14, 1893 in a magazine called Vogue and appeared under the title The Father of the Sire Baby in a section called Character Studies. It was later reprinted in Bio Folks, which is a collection of Chopin's story in 1894. Desire's Baby story setting took place in southern Louisiana during its antebellum period, before the American Civil War in the mid 19th century. During this period, blacks were still referred as Negroes and slavery was a part of their everyday routine. They pick up cottons on plantations while their master or employers led an easygoing and indulgent life. The Sire Baby is also one of the few stories that Kate Chopin said during this period. The name antebellum period came from the Latin word antebellum which means before the war. Also, in American history, the antebellum period refers to the first half of 19th century, prior to the Civil War. One characteristic of this period would be the use of slavery and the culture it fortress. In addition, during this period, federal and state governments grip with the contradiction of US slavery. The economy was largely crop-based during this period. Cotton, sugar, tobacco, and rice were the major crops grew in this period, in which, in the story, slaves picked cotton in the field. Furthermore, the wealthy mainly earned profit from using the plantation system and used their slave labor to grow and harvest crops on their farmland. This story is also directly influenced by the Southern Creole culture. Creole is a non-Anglo-Saxon culture 
and lifestyle that flourished in Louisiana before it was sold to the United States in 1803, and that continued to dominate South Louisiana until the early decades of the 20th century. The immigration of French and Spanish immigrants into Louisiana. Prior to Louisiana Purchase and the slavery in the United States caused this culture. Also, the term Creole referred to a person born in the colonies rather than their mother country. The Creole culture is also identified with the distinct language, demonstrates one aspect of the impact of the transportation of numerous African slaves into the region. Well, moving on to the next part, I'll be talking about relevant cultural and social aspects. In the story Desiree's Baby, the name Desiree has an implied meaning of what is desired in a woman: white, pure, and submissive. While Desiree is seen as a gift from God to her foster parents who can't bear children, she is also expected to fit in the characteristics that the society wants a woman to present. Readers and critics see the story as a tragedy of racism, of the slave system, but in fact, it is something much more specific—a tragedy of the African American woman. The condition of being black and female is much more debilitating than that of being black and male. From the story, we can learn that white is superior to black, while male is superior to female. Therefore, as a woman who is white but considered black, Desiree is a victim of double racial and sexual discrimination. As we know, Armand is the main male character in the story. Who doesn't know he is the one who is actually black until the end? And through the cruel way Armand treats his slaves and the rejection he acts out when he discovers his baby boy is part black, it is obvious that white blood not only is superior to black, but also seems to be mythologized into having the power to reform the black. Although his attitude towards the slaves changes when he first becomes a father, he abandons his love, kindness, and passion for Desiree and the baby. From the second, he makes the assumption based on the baby's appearance. He thinks that the black heritage carried by the baby is from Desiree, whose heritage is unknown. Here, the stress on feminine vulnerability combines with the acceptance of black slavery, and we can observe the fact that Armand and Desiree are both products of the society in the antebellum era. Armand is the upholder of conservative values and is in a privileged as well as dominant position in the society. On the other hand, Desiree embodies the value of society as being a woman who is powerless, submissive, and inferior to men, especially white men. However, no one in the story questions the general condition of blacks and slaves, the notion of racial superiority. Instead of recognizing the institutional nature of exploitation based on race, class, and sex, people seem to feel that problems stem from the lack of certain personal qualities, which brings about Desiree's tragedy. is also caused by ethical deficiencies of the black character. At the same time, superiors should have a sense of noblesse oblige. Which refers to the unwritten obligation of people from a noble ancestry to act honorably and generously to those less fortunate and of lower class. Yet the characters in the story still remain superior. Just like Armand isn't willing to give up the privileged life of being white for the family, even though he finds out in the end that he is the one who has black blood in his veins. To conclude, Desiree's Baby is an essentially racist text that is directed neither against the Southern racial system nor against the dark side of human nature, but against the inferiority of black blood. I'm going to talk about different interpretation in Desiree's Baby. So the first one is the irony of French words, and the first example is El Abri. Which means shelter in English. The shelter cannot protect Desire and her family from falling apart. The second one is Desire, which means Desire in English. She was abandoned and unloved by Armand due to the child's skin color. The third one is La Blanche, which means the white one. 
Even though her skin color is light, she cannot escape her fate due to her race and identity. The last one is Armin's mother's origin. From the letter, Armin realized that his mother is actually the one with the black origin instead of the desire. Second, the colors not only means the race but also represent their personalities. So the first one is light and brightness is associated with desire. We can see it from her dress and her emotion, which also foreshadow that she is white and not black. And the second one is Armand. He is associated with dark and black. And we can see from her dark handsome face and the house portrait in the story, which also implies that he has black origin in his blood. The last one is yellow, which represents mixed race. And we can see that the plantation house is also colored yellow, which may foreshadow that Armin is actually mixed race, not pure white. Next, I'm going to talk about the similarities between LeBlanche and Desire. So, the first one is that they are both like Armin's property. LeBlanche is Armin's slave, so she needs to obey him and do whatever he asks. On the other hand, Desire is also like Armin's property. She doesn't have a right and also have to ask for Armin's permission when she wants to do anything. And the second one is that they both have a sexual relationship with Armin. Desire's baby and the quadrant boy born by La Blanche are both mixed race, and we can guess that the quadrant boy's father may be Armin. So we can see that under Armin's control, they both share a lot of similarities. Last, Armin may know his true race before marriage. So from the story, we can see that Armin know that he is the one with black origin from a letter written by his mom to his dad. However, there are some clues showing that he might know the truth before marriage. So the first one is that his mother died in France when he was 8 years old. And 8 years old is old enough to recognize a person's skin color, so he might know that his mother is not a white person. The second one is that Armin's attitude towards Desire's unknown background is weird. Since at that time, race and identity can decide someone's fate, he doesn't care about Desire's background, which is something unnormal. And the last one is that Armin may use the unknown background as an advantage. If their baby is white, then they can live happily forever. But if their baby is black, then he can blame Desire for having the black origin, and he will not be affected by it. My name is Nini, and I'm going to talk about relevance to today's culture and society. And it can be divided into three parts. The first one is racial inequality, and the second one is man dominance in marriage, and the third one is modern slavery. Start from racial inequality. This aspect can be divided into two general parts, which are respectively Asian discrimination and black discrimination. First, since COVID-19 was first found in China, many people have started to feel hostile toward Asians. Both verbal and physical assault cases have increased in the place where Asians are the minority. Second, numerous cases of police brutality led to the death of African Americans. And since George Floyd's death, this issue have gained global awareness and that Black Lives Matters protests have begun held around the world. First, women's rights are restricted in several countries. For example, a woman is considered only half a witness in Yemen, and a man is the master in his family. Take women in Egypt, for example. Women cannot leave their house without their husband's permission. And also, there is an in equal roles that women have to get their husband's permission to apply for a passport in 32 countries. Last, we will talk about modern slavery. 
Although it is hard to imagine now, this issue is still hotly debated in modern generation. And there are two kinds of examples of modern slavery, which are forced labor and forced marriage. First, nearly 21 million people are the victims of forced labor, and 26% of them are under 18 years old. For example, forced labor in Xinjiang working in the cotton field, and the child labor problems in the diamond industry in Africa. Second, about 90% of marriage are arranged or forced in India, and many of them even haven't become adults. These girls may suffer from domestic violence, becoming pregnant, or even being deprived of education.